I'm Stephanie Kalala. Um, I've been attending Nexus since about May of 2019. This is my uh, testimony. At 18 years old, um, I was in a really toxic relationship, emotionally abusive and many forms of abuse. Uh, I dropped out of college. I started working at a strip club. Um, my lifestyle just kind of became partying, drinking, sex, you know, cheap thrills. Pretty on the outside, dead on the inside. At 21, um, I found out I was pregnant. Um, I never wanted to have children, so it was kind of a shock to me. Um, but actually, when I found out I was pregnant, it was very odd, like, peace that I felt like, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have my baby, and, and I just felt like a comfort that I wasn't really expecting to feel. So at six months pregnant, I stopped stripping. I just made that plunge into just changing my lifestyle. Um, I eventually left that relationship and just kind of strived to, to better my life for my son. I decided to go to nursing school. Um, working in healthcare was always a passion of mine after my dad passed away. Nursing was always like a calling that I had. Um, so I put myself through nursing school, single parent, um, no real help from my son's dad. I quickly settled into another relationship that actually wasn't too far different from my past relationship. I just was maybe kind of blind to some of those red flags. Got married, um, we had more children, which were, you know, blessings to us. Um, but that relationship was very um, based on physical. Um, we didn't have God in our marriage and um, just something always felt like it was missing. Um, something always just felt like empty inside of me, like I was always like hoping and searching for more. Um, sorry. I was just kind of empty in my marriage. Um, I started just kind of drinking and taking Xanax and just kind of needing like anxiolytics or, you know, downers to just be able to like sleep at night because I just couldn't ever really get myself to like calm down. I just was always like on edge. And around that same time, I was just really in a funk and my son uh, made best friends with a boy named Jackson. Jackson and Aiden got really, really close and I got introduced to Jackson's mom, Lisa, and um, she became just a really a light in my life. Um, Lisa just often would invite us to come to church. She would ask us, you know, what church did we attend? And, you know, I shared with her that I hadn't gone to church since my dad passed away. It was just too difficult for me. Every time I'd walk in, I would just feel really emotional. And also just knowing my past, I just never felt like I was um, good enough. So Lisa just kept inviting me. I mean, it was probably about six months that she would invite me like weekly, daily, every time we'd interact. You know, are you guys gonna come to church this week? <laughs> and I would just always decline. Uh, just my depression got really bad. It was just really heavy on me. And there was one day that I remember I was sitting in the shower uh, for like 45 minutes and I was just contemplating suicide. Um, I was just thinking if I just ended it, you know, I wouldn't have to deal with all my problems. <laughs> Something, you know, I just, I snapped out of it. I thought about my kids' faces, you know, and I could never leave them and do that to them. Um, so I got out of the shower, um, you know, got ready. I checked my phone and there was a text from Lisa. She had asked me, you know, about coming to church. Um, there was an upcoming marriage conference that she had invited me and my husband to. She said that the Lord had just put it really heavy on her heart, that she felt like she needed to reach out to me, and she was just very, very persistent. She was not giving up on, on inviting us. At first, when Lisa was inviting me, for the longest time, I didn't even know that she was a pastor. So I think that was one thing that really helped me to always feel comfortable, because had I known that, I don't I don't know that I would have um, even allowed myself to get close, you know, to, to even build a friendship with her. The first time that I came to Nexus, it was just like an overwhelming peace um, that just came over me. I just felt like I was at 
home. I needed to be here. At first, I still was very like reserved, but just every week hearing Pastor John um, give the sermons, it was like that sermon was tailor-made like for me. I went on the app, listened to the apps about depression. Those were such a blessing to me, you know, just to know like my pastor has felt the same way, you know, that I felt that, you know, I'm not the only one, that the Satan will want to isolate you and put, put these lies in your head to make you think, oh, you're not worthy and no, you can't tell anybody about this because, you know, he wants you to think that there's nobody else that, that can help you through it. I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. He restored my brokenness, um, the depression, you know, fell off of me. Um, I'm drug and alcohol free. I haven't had to take Xanax in over two years. Anytime that I feel anxious thoughts, you know, I, I turn to prayer, you know, and, and prayer has been the best medicine. Um, it's helped me become a better mother. It's helped me become a, just a better woman. Um, yeah. I started having ringing in my ears. I would be asleep at night and my kids would be crying and I couldn't hear them because at that time they were one and two and their little cries were like at a pitch where just with the ringing in my ears it would just drown that out and there were several nights where like Aiden would actually wake me up and be like hey mom like Lincoln or Johnny are, are awake or or just you know something would like nudge me awake and, and I would freak out because I didn't know how long they had been crying for. I ended up going to see my PCP and at the time I was told I had like a double ear infection. Um, she put me on antibiotics. I ended up doing that for like two months and then I ended up going and seeing an ENT and the ENT was like, yeah, structurally there's nothing wrong. There's no wax in your ears. You just have hearing loss. And that it just was gonna continue to get worse and that the only thing that would make it better is, is if I got hearing aids. You know, a month ago I could hear just fine. So it just was like a shock to me. So there were several instances where we would have um, services over healing and I was always too afraid to go up there because <laughs> I didn't feel like my faith was strong enough that he would heal me. I had friends come back and say, hey, they're praying healing over people like you need to go get your ears prayed over. And I was like, oh no, I can't do that. Like I haven't been in service, like the flow's not right. So I came out went down into the front and it was just mind-blowing. Pastor John said, have I prayed over your eyes before? And I said, um, no, I'm here to have you pray over my ears. And he said, yeah, but you know, you have problems with your eyes. <laughs> and uh, there's just no way he could have known that. I don't ever wear my glasses, even though I'm supposed to. <laughs> yeah. So he, he prayed over my eyes and I was born with a lazy eye and it wasn't caught until I was like two or three years old. So I've always had problems with double vision and like depth perception. And he prayed over my eyes. It was almost instantaneous that, that the, the blurriness that I always see, just a little more clarity. And he'd asked me to read a sign that normally I wouldn't have been able to read at the distance that he was standing. And then when he prayed over my ears, I just put my hands up and I just started praying in the Holy Spirit. And I just was believing for it and believing for the healing. And he put his finger in my ear. And when he pulled his finger out, there was a pop in my ears. And immediately the ringing went away. Tears were just going down my face. It was just so amazing. I would just really encourage them to come to the Holy Ghost Rally in September. What's important for people to know is it didn't only change my life. My parents started coming to Nexus with me, my mom and my stepdad. Um, my sister has also been coming to Nexus and just generational ties that it can break. It can change not only you, but it can also change your family. It's just amazing to see what God's done in my life. The fact that he took a stripper, you know, out of the pits of hell, so to speak, made me a mother. The child that everybody wanted me to abort, he brought that around full circle and he used that child to introduce me to the very people that invited me to Nexus. Just one invite to somebody, you know, can change so many people's lives. Pastor John always talks about taking victory in the small things, you know. At 21 years old, I wasn't taking victory in being a single parent, but just, just look, just everything that's led up to now, how it's changed my life um, and changed my family's life. Yeah.